Welcome to the studio of Caroline Todt from Copenhagen, Denmark. It's our Nordic exchange of the Goethe Institute. And Carolina, you have been here now for three months. It's your final week. Um, but you are actually prolonging your stay. So Leipzig must have done something with you, to you. And we are now in your studio, which um, I have to say each resident coming here has a different approach. Either they conquer the city, uh, they go into landscape and nature. Um, your stay here was very much connected once to the lakes and to the outside. So mm -hmm. you really took the outside to the inside. And at the same time, your studio actually became your, your platform, your, your way to, to install and to, to make a presentation of what you were encountering outside. And uh, your studio is actually part of your installation of work. Uh, and now we are right in that installation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, could you say something about this practice? Is that new to you? Have you been working that way before? I've never had such a big studio before, so for me it was, from the beginning I really wanted to exploit this opportunity to uh -huh. have a big space where you can work uh, with the, like, what's this? The, the like height five, of the five, ceilings? Five meter ceilings and yeah, just because, I mean, I have a nice studio in Copenhagen, but it's not this big at all. Yeah. So I always thought a lot about, in the beginning I thought, because I'm, my usual practice is mainly painting, and I thought that I would paint big paintings, but then for the project that I was embarking on, I just actually found that working with the plants here spoke much more to, to this project. And it's funny because it's actually a project about the inner landscape, so yeah. about the... Uh, these sensorial uh, experiences of having um, like a concussion and being like neurologically out of normal balance. Um, but I felt like that these um, plants and flowers that I found here in Leipzig, both the Hassan clay or yeah, the Hassan clay, yeah, Herford's clover, yeah, and um, this clematis type that is also everywhere. They yeah. kind of have clematis. Yeah, yeah. They have these properties <laughs> that I felt like um, spoke to kind of these sensations that I was trying to convey. Uh, so even though I have been painting some, um, and my work is often related to the relationship with the body and like our surroundings, especially our more like what you call nature, natural surroundings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for this project, I really felt like painting wasn't material enough. And these plants just really spoke to me and I just have been experimenting with different ways of, of uh, conveying these experiences and sensations through the plants and, and how to install them to convey this. And it's not a st like strict narrative, it's more like, it's more intuitively Base, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, your first question when we had in our conversations was, can I get a scaffolding? <laughs> <laughs> you were the first artist in 40 years, just right away stepping into the space, yeah. seeing the walls and saying, I need a scaffolding, I want to use 100% of the space. Mm -hmm. And you really did, and through these three months, you, you, I could really feel how you were invading the space step by step. Yeah, I mean, mm. conquering every every meter, but it was also changing over time. And you started out actually very painterly, but also the nature and landscape. Mm. I can also see that in your paintings of the body. Mm. Yeah, it's already there in the paintings. And now actually being here, I could feel how how this also came together with the installation. Mm. And um, yeah, let's let's walk around a little bit. Um, I would uh, go a little bit further. Yeah. <laughs> so we can encompass the space a bit more. Yeah, I immediately felt rem reminded to my childhood because we were we were collecting the house when I was a child, mm -hmm. and it has a very special aesthetic, very soft and inviting, mm -hmm. but also very playful. And uh, you were talking about. Um, your accident you had before and the change in your artistic practice uh, 
Um, maybe you could speak a little bit about this piece, piece up here. Yeah. yeah, they are actually two, two long wings. Yeah, they do uh, kind of represent this uh, organ of breath. Yeah. The, the title is Breath Wish. Yeah. And it is just kind of a tribute to, to, to the action of breath because uh, after having this accident and this concussion, uh, there was a lot of like my autonomous nervous system that was a kind of out of balance, which like had me feel, for example, anxiety. Yeah. And with this comes this um, feeling of not being able to control your breath or being able to breathe yeah. naturally. Yeah. And all these things that we take for granted every day when you are kind of like thrown off the normal um, homeostasis. Yeah. Um, when you just yeah. notice it and you, and you get to yearn for it so deeply in a yeah. way that, uh, yeah, if you've never tried this, you just don't think about it, you just take it for granted. So for me, it was a means of, when I saw this Hassan thing, it just reminded me so much, maybe also because of my uh, biological background, but it reminded me a lot of this lung tissues uh, and also actually brain tissues, which was I thought it was interesting because it has this fleshy color when you see it in the landscape it's, yeah. it's, it's m more animal sensation than, than other plants because it has these colors and this fluffiness to it and then yeah I guess from there I just got the, these images in my head of making this kind of very organ like structure and then also the object behind you which is more about uh, it's called rest wish, and it's it's yes. it's basically the and same. <laughs> it's basically the same uh, thing, but with connection, with the connection to being sleep deprived and not having normal circadian rhythms, which you also normally take for granted. Or I think actually in our times, a lot of people know what it's like to suffer from insomnia. <laughs> but um, just this deep yearning to being able to rest when this is the only thing you need, and then you are not able to do it. It's it becomes quite a strong uh, dominant theme yeah. in your everyday life. Yeah. But also here in your personal hanging, here mm -hmm. in your studio, I can also see your paintings with the body, and it's all the conversation yes. with your objects. Yes. So it's uh, an example there, we can call <laughs> it in German, yeah? It's, it's yeah. all playing together, yeah? The two dimensional work with the three dimensional work, mm. uh, and you in your own cosmos, basically. Well, we do, um, uh, we, we make an agile workshop um, with the Nordic uh, Goethe exchanges and also with the Pacific Goethe exchanges and that's the result after two, three months of work and thinking in a medium which is not necessarily known to the artists. Not to me. Not to you. <laughs> so it's a complete experiment, something new to learn, to encounter, to think in a different technique. What was your experience with the, with the etching workshop? I of course wanted to try the most complicated and like <laughs> uncontrollable <laughs> technique to really get all the full benefits of having yeah. a Fantastic. beer Fantastic. on that's a guide. Yeah. Um, so yes, I went with the Akutena and of course I also chose a quite complex uh, image. Yeah. Um, which I regretted a lot on the day I was etching because it took 12 hours instead of the three hours I was anticipating. <laughs> but um, it was really magical when it was the, when I saw the first print because it actually worked and I was just afraid that it would be totally... I mean, I couldn't really see what I was doing, so it was, yeah. <laughs> it was like working blindfolded, but I am kind of a control freak, so for me it was pretty beautiful to... Like when you do ceramics, that you that there is this mysterious um, layer of the yeah. process where you don't actually have control and you just have to trust this magic of the yeah. medium. Uh, yeah. So it was a really fun experience for me, and um, I think that it. Uh, I'm I'm quite happy with the result. <laughs> can we can we pick it up for a second? Uh, yes. How many tones, how many shades of grey did you choose? Four. Four. Do you just do it like this? Yes. So, no. aquatic <laughs> is not easy to do. And uh, 
it's always a surprise because until the plate hasn't been printed, you don't know actually. No, you plan. cannot really see, but I think that yeah. plate is almost my favorite object. It's yeah. so beautiful yeah. in itself, the plate. Yeah. But these are actually just still artist proofs. Yeah. I haven't selected the final print color yet. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Caroline. Well, I hope continuing here in Leipzig, you will discover something else. And, mm -hmm. um, I'll have a new studio space to yes. fill and yes. try to, <laughs> to find the limits. Indeed. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you for this lovely installation.